Hi there. My name's Miranda Bruce. I'm a PhD student at the Australian National University, and today I'm going to be talking about the Internet of Things and ontology. So, as the name suggests, the Internet of Things is bringing attention back to things. From the objects of the everyday to the objects of war, people are talking about how to make things talk more to each other and to us to make meaning. For social scientists, critical theorists, and philosophers, this poses a lot of immediate concerns or questions about the political and philosophical significance of the Internet of Things. For example, the distribution and evolution of labor along racial, gender, or geographical lines, the nature of power between first and third world countries, the nature of the digital divide, the impact on expressions and concepts of identity, and so on. All these kinds of questions are concerned with what kind of future the Internet of Things is helping to create and therefore with what kind of possibilities are being created in the present. But there's something missing from these approaches, a focus on the possibilities that are present in the materiality of the Internet of Things. So what do I mean by materiality? I don't just mean the user experience or user interfaces. Rather, how is it that objects exert their existence or their thingness in the Internet of Things? What ontological challenges does the Internet of Things make to our classical frameworks of understanding and our relationships to objects? What I'm interested in here is how we can approach these problems without falling into the usual framework of sovereign human who grants meaning to passive objects. Even our most familiar social constructionist approaches are somewhat lacking here, as they still imply a human who constructs and a world that is constructed. So I'm going to talk about how we can think about the Internet of Things in terms of matter. How can we think about the material aspect of the Internet of Things? And what new or different ways can we be thinking about it instead? I'd like to start with an old idea. Think about a block of clay and a sculptor. The usual idea about matter in this situation is that before the clay is sculpted by the artist, it is formless. It only gains meaning, presence, legitimacy, and life after it has been given an intelligible form. This is one kind of example of hylomorphism. It's a term from Aristotle to denote that a relationship between being and forms, where structure is something that is given to form through being. It's been used as a metaphysical starting point for much philosophy and social theory, whether or not that's been acknowledged. So what does hylomorphism have to do with the Internet of Things? Well, the parallel I'm seeing with the Internet of Things is that the data is seen as the clay, Machines or sensors collect data to be shaped or sculpted by algorithms and in interfaces in order to be main meaningful. The Internet of Things is being advocated as a way to remove humans from object interactions, as is the point of machine-to-machine -machine technology and why it was created for industrial production decades ago. And when humans do interact with objects in the Internet of Things, the objects will report meaningfully about their passage through space and time. For example, in 2010, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers trialed a clip-on sensor for construction workers, which collected data on how much vibration the workers experienced. The sensors warned the workers when they had met the le legal limit of exposure, and reported the movements of workers and their equipment to an external server. The database then calculated work processes that were efficient and adhered to work health and safety standards. And so businesses, coders, and consumers alike are poised as those who will determine the mold that the data will be sculpted into. And more thought is being put into the abstract idea of how data will be molded than the material events that make up data procurement. This is the level that a lot of criticism of the Internet of Things is happening on, and it's the level that I want to question. Of course, I'm not to th the first to think along these lines. There have been developments in social theory in recent decades that question this very assumption of matter and its capacities. What I'm thinking of in particular here is the new materialist turn. New materialism is a theory that's developed recently and shares a lot of links with affect theory. New materialism tries not to have a set of maxims, but as a whole it does emphasize a non-anthropocentric approach, which means that it doesn't just pay attention to other organic life forms, but also non-organic ontology and agency. It focuses on how all kinds of matter are an organizing and agential part of experience. So going back to the sculptor example, how would something like new materialism look at it? First, it would argue that clay, as a material, is not inert. In fact, it has a very specific molecular makeup, which means it has specific responses to stimulus, it acts on other bodies in particular ways, for example, it dries out human skin. 
So instead of passive matter being acted upon by, a, by an active life form, the meeting of clay and sculptor is actually an encounter between material bodies, each with their own agency and capacities. New materialism might then go on to argue that the capacity to transform, which emerges in a specific encounter, is imminent within objects, rather than being given or always already determined from the outside. What this approach does is bring attention to the thingness of things, and gives the assemblages of objects that are found in events a liveliness and complex dynamic. Now, new materialism implies a much bigger discussion of methods and practices that I don't have time to go into here, so I think I'll finish up by focusing on what every problem starts with. Questions. With new materialism in mind, what other questions can we ask when we think about the Internet of Things? Rather than what is the Internet of Things, or what is a thing, or what is the Internet, we can ask instead, what can the Internet of Things do? What kind of potentials does something like Google Glass open up? How does the capacity to interface with objects in new ways change how we can interface with anything at all? If the production of internet-connected objects is, for example, going to create an even greater demand for labour and materials for, from developing countries, as well as the space and technology to recycle unconnected or unconnectable objects, how will these massive material forces exert themselves? How will they actively resist the world? And how can we formulate ways of resisting with objects so that we can formulate different and new assemblages of things that create, can create different futures with different potentials? Now, the apparent danger of new materialist method is that it can ignore the structural forces, like racism or capitalism, that can and do exact very real and very ongoing harm in populations. But I'm not suggesting we abandon structuralist or constructionist methods, even. What I'm suggesting is a more complex, less human-centric, more lively, and much more sensitive approach to ontology, to how events unfold, and how it is that the things that are found in events become things, or exert their thingness. Essentially, what I'm calling for is a better approach to capacity and potential. If we view capacity as something exclusively sentient or human, and based on pre-existent categories of things like race, class, or gender, then the social, social scientist's job of trying to explore the nature of an event, its real conditions of emergence, can result in, ana in an analysis that ignores the forces that give real shape to the event and its ultimate structure and representation. So when we shift our attention to the capacities of these new material assemblages, that we can ask different and more complex questions about the effects and the potentials of the Internet of Things. Thanks very much.